I really don't like making reviews like this one. Kind of bad reviews about the games that I actually love. But sometimes, I guess, you need to show some tough love to make games actually better. And yes, as you understood from the title of the video and from everything else, we're gonna talk about Elder Scrolls Online Blackwood Chapter. Just to give you a heads up, if you think that this is an ESO review for 2021, it's not. We're gonna discuss only ESO Blackwood Chapter. And if you haven't played ESO in the past and don't know how what chapters actually mean, chapter is some kind of expansion for the game. Basically an addition to the game, which is different from DLC for ESO, which are much smaller additions like a single dungeon or maybe some kind of mechanics that is very, very small or maybe a small region. And Blackwood is the latest chapter for ESO, at least for year 2021. And we're going to discuss just that let's just get it started as always i'm not gonna waste a lot of your time and tell you the answer right away for the people who want to get the answer right away and all i ask in return is drop a like and subscribe to the channel i guess that's not a lot and for the short answer whether it's worth to buy eso blackwood chapter or not the answer is no unless you're a big fan of the game and want everything that this game can provide you eso blackwood chapter adds a new region in tamriel called blackwood and if you played previous elder scrolls games oblivion in particular you know at least a part of this region this region is actually located in the south part of cyrodiil and contains some part of cyrodiil and some part of black marsh as well which is an argonian territory if you know what i mean and weirdly enough the story is about oblivion crisis and if you think the story of this game is something like an oblivion yes you'll be absolutely right it is exactly like that and to give you a short explanation which is exactly the oblivion's explanation the daedric prince of destruction wants to merge his realm of oblivion which now we know it's called the deadlands with the nern to rule it all it's exactly like the elder scrolls for oblivion but let's now talk about the region itself, the biggest addition of the chapter. To be very short and concise, the territory of Blackwood is very generic and boring. If you have seen any other territories in ESO, you practically seen Blackwood. If I dropped in a game and told you to not use a map, you would simply not understand which region you're in. It's so generic. It takes the part of Imperial region territories like Cyrodiil and Black March regions like Murkmire or other Argonian territories. But it looks exactly like them. Like exactly. There are very, very, very few differences from any other region. Basically, the map layout is different. And the region is not very big as well. But okay, with every big expansion, we were introduced with some kind of world event, like the events that were specific to the specific regions, that gave each and every region its own distinct taste. In the previous expansion, Greymoor, it was a hero storms. It was a giant ceremonies that was happening, which included vampires and werewolves, and it was pretty huge thing. And there were a bunch of different places where it would happen, and it was very interesting mechanics to take part in even if you did this over and over again. For elsewhere, it was dragons where basically you were following the world event around and try to take it down, which was pretty interesting as well. Even though each and every one of them would become repetitive, eventually it was still a pretty fun experience. At least at, in a worst case scenario in the beginning. Do you know what Blackwood adds? If you guessed Oblivion Portals, exactly that, as Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. It adds an Oblivion Portals from in, in some certain places, which does not even show up on a map. And when you go through this Oblivion portals taking you to Deadlands, you're basically being taken on set of different islands which exist in one overarching world. And you need to go through the waves of mobs, exactly like Elder Scrolls Oblivion, and at the end, you need to fight the boss. You don't have a seal stone like in Elder Scrolls 4, but you have a boss. Boss is not very memorable, not very different, and pretty easy to defeat. The interesting mechanics lies with the entrance point to this territory. Basically, each and every Oblivion Gate will take you to the different points of entrance. Yet, they all take to exactly same boss in exactly same spot. Basically, just go through gate, go through different mobs, kill the boss, get out, find another gate which does not show up on a map not even on a mini map with add-ons that's it that's basically it and with the boss there is no distinct mechanic there is no difficulty there is not even good looks it's just another demon monster that you are fighting so it's pretty underwhelming in that part as well each with each previous expansion this world events made the expansion distinctly different and fun to play here it's not 
it's just bad. Okay, let's just forget for a second about the region itself. The main reason why people are actually jumping through those chapters and things is actually the story, because the story in ESO is fantastic, usually at least. So how's the story? Of course, I won't be giving you any spoilers. And you can actually play the prologue quest for absolutely free. Just go in a crown store and get a quest just to understand what's actually happening in a Blackwood. To be fair, story is okay, pretty interesting, but again, pretty generic. And again, it's exactly like Oblivion, just way too generic. The entire story is so generic that even though I completed the entire story only a few days ago, and I played it through like very quickly, and but very thoroughly, only one mission actually stuck, sticks to mind. Only one mission. And there was nothing amazing in this mission, nothing particular, just not, not giving any spoilers, but your mission is basically to infiltrate certain place. And that was the most interesting mission in the game. Even the final battle, even the climax of the expansion is exactly like Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. If you played it, you basically know exactly how it goes. Maybe with the small differences, you don't have a god emperor fighting by your side. That's that's basically what it is. And even though it is made to be like epic, great fight, the main story of base ESO had far, far better missions and storylines than the climax of this entire chapter. Do you know what is the worst part about this? That it actually doesn't have an ending. The chapter ends on a cliffhanger. Like on literal cliffhanger. Like in a Grey Moor, in a previous expansion, the story was not wrapped up as well. There were some loose ends left, but not a huge loose end. There were some loose ends left only. But here, the entire ending of the story is behind two DLCs, which are basically dungeon DLCs. At least one is, which came just a few days ago, which I didn't play to be fair. And the last DLC is still to come till the end of 2021. And mind that, these DLCs are sold separately or they're part of ESO Plus. Meaning that you still have to pay money for them, even though if you even even if you bought the black one. And it just and this this type of BS just disappoints me in a huge way. There is only one thing, one major thing that is different from everything that you have seen before. And it and it's a companion's mechanic. Yes, from now on you can actually have a companion which can fight with you and actually be useful. And if you played Star Wars Old Republic, it's something similar to that because it seems like they they try to copy this mechanic. And the companions are actually very useful and if you play solo, it's amazing. But do you know what's the worst thing about this is? Even though companions is one of the flagship mechanics of an expansion, you literally are giving no directions or anything to get these companions. Do you know how do you get them? You just go in the world, find a very specific quest, which are two for two different companions, and at the end, the guy that you are doing the mission for starts to follow you. That's literally it. That's literally how you get a companions. You are not getting through the main campaign, you are not getting through some big event or something like that. No, stumble upon the quest that you that if you didn't look specifically, which I did, you would not be able to find it. I found I found specific quests, I found where it can be taken, I took it, I completed it, and the quests themselves were not bad quests are pretty okay quests but nothing significant and then i got those companions it seemed like zenimax just tried to push this chapter very quickly because they literally had nothing to push this year it's it's it's, it's bad the companions themselves companions mechanics themselves don't get me wrong it's good it's pretty good i love it it's pretty great especially if you're playing solo i myself play solo a lot i rarely play with anyone because nobody i know actually has it i usually play with the random groups companions in a world in a just regular open world they are just simply amazing now i can actually defeat world bosses pretty easily and complete all the quests that i want pretty easily and complete everything that i want pretty easily which is amazing but how they actually provided this and you have only two companions it's just bad overall companions are pretty good fighters and they're pretty useful if you are playing solo but still it could have it could have been done much better but are the companions worth to buy entire expansion no but they're a great addition nonetheless okay let's now discuss pricing because in my videos this is very important and of course we're gonna be discussing pricing for pc steam in particular okay you can get access to this expansion in a few different ways first is if you don't have a base game you need to get a base game and the base game costs $19.99 or $20 and it can go as low as for $8 for both tier 1 and tier 2 countries and for that price base game is worth any day of the week even for full $20 it is an incredible 
incredible value because the story that you're gonna get from this game and the amount of gameplay that you're gonna get is well beyond worth of $20. You can also get a bundle which includes the base game and all of the expansions, including the Blackboard. And I'm talking only about expansions, not DLCs. The package will cost $29.99 or $30 for tier two countries and $60 for tier one countries. And even though this package costs quite a lot, and as you know, I'm actually a pretty cheap gamer and try to save as much as I can on everything that I can, even 60 bucks for amount of content that you are getting, even full price, 60 bucks, and is an incredible value. Guys and girls, you simply cannot imagine how much value you can get for that price. It's insane. For $30, it's worth any day of the week. For $60, still absolutely worth it. Even with a Blackwood. With or without Blackwood. You can also get collector's edition of that bundle, which costs $40 for tier 2 countries and $80 for tier 1 countries. And here where I can draw a line. For $39.99, yes, absolutely worth it. Because what you're getting is all the things that I talked before, plus all the collective items, like a bunch of mounts, which are very difficult to get in the game. If you have played this game, you know exactly. And we are getting quite great mounts, and it's insane how good those mounts are. You're also getting a bunch of costumes, bunch of emotes, bunch of pets, and things like that. If you're interested in customization of your game like that, and if you care about that, yes, it's absolutely worth it. If you don't, well, just don't get that. For $80, meaning that basically for additional $20, yes, if those things are actually worth for you, you can get them. I actually own this version myself. However, I was provided with a free key for that. Also, I'd like to note that I owned all the previous expansions and the base game that I bought myself. And Blackwood separately without the base game actually costs $39.99 for the tier one countries and $19.99 for tier two countries. And overall conclusion is this. No, Blackwood is not worth to buy. It is a great addition if you're buying an entire bundle because having a companions through all of your quests is an incredible addition. And if you want to know everything about Elder Scrolls Universe, this will be an incredible addition through all the other expansions and the base game. And of course, if you are ESO junkie or fanatic and you want everything that this game is providing to you, then yeah, by all means, go and get a Blackwood you're still gonna have a bunch of fun time. In my opinion, you're gonna waste your money, but still, you're gonna have fun time, and that's all that matters. And it, to be fair, it breaks my heart to say that, because I love ESO. ESO is one of few games that I come back over and over and over again and enjoy myself a lot and having a blast each time I return to this game. And ZeniMax, please, please try better next time. And do you know what you should do? You should like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for being here with me. Like the video if you liked it again. Subscribe if you want more videos like this one. And I'm going to see you in the next one. See ya.